Another group of angels specifically identified as the seraphim. In the Hebrew language, seraphim means burning ones. The book of Isaiah tells us of the seraphim. The book of Isaiah is a fascinating one to study. For starters, the records of Isaiah's prophecy are among the most well-documented of all the Old Testament books. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1948 and featured a copy of the book dated from 100 BC, which was over a thousand years older than the next oldest copy, which dated from 900 AD. At the time, translation work on the Revised Standard Version of the Bible was being completed, but the work was stopped while these documents were checked, but very little needed changing. In the latter half of Israel's kingdom period, Isaiah lived in Jerusalem and spoke on God's behalf to the leaders of Jerusalem and Judah. He expressed, first of all, a message of God's judgment. He admonished Israel's corrupt leaders that the rebellion against their covenant with God would come at a cost, that God was going to use the great empires of Assyria and after them, Babylon, to judge Jerusalem if they continued in idolatry and tyranny of the poor. But that declaration was incorporated with a message of hope. Isaiah's grand vision of God sitting on his throne in the temple, surrounded by heavenly creatures shouting, God is holy, 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 and Isaiah suddenly sees how corrupt he and his people Israel are, and he thinks he'll be destroyed by God's holiness, but he isn't. Then one of the seraphim flew and burns him, but not to destroy, but rather to purify him from sin. And as Isaiah mulls over this peculiar experience, God assigns him a tough task. He is to keep preaching the coming judgment, but because Israel has reached a point of no return, his warnings will paradoxically harden the people. So the hardening impact of the Word of God is a key theme, and it is no wonder that Isaiah asked, how long do I have to go on preaching and hardening them with no response? Isaiah had one of the toughest assignments of all the prophets, but of course, if he hadn't gone through with it, we wouldn't have this amazing book. And he didn't know that centuries ahead, this book would be an inspiration. But in his lifetime, he was a failure. Nobody listened. They just got harder and harder for 40 years. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine inequity is taken away and thy sin purged. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 7. The prophet perceived at once that he had no right to be in the holy presence of God, and he confessed as much. So one of the seraphim took a burning coal from the altar and touched Isaiah's lips to cleanse his inequity and purge his sin. Therefore, seraphim have wings. They proclaim the holiness of God. They demonstrate to men their need to be cleansed from sin. Despite the fact that the seraphim and cherubim belong to different hierarchies and are shrouded in mystery in the Bible, they share one trait. They are continuously praising God. Angels and celestial beings are lovely, but they pale in contrast to our heavenly Lamb, the Lord of glory, before whom all forces in heaven and on earth bow in holy devotion and breathless adoration. To the chief musician upon Shoshan Imaduth, a psalm of Asaph, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Psalms chapter 80, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. Psalms chapter 99, verse 1. The phrase holy, holy, holy appears in the Bible twice, once in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, and once in the New, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Both times the phrase is spoken or sung by heavenly creatures, and both times it appears in a vision of a man being brought to God's throne, first by the prophet Isaiah and subsequently by the apostle John. The holiness of God is the most difficult of all God's traits to express. 
Holiness is not something we inherit as part of our nature. We only become holy in relationship to Christ. It's a sanctity that's been ascribed to you. It is an imputed holiness. Only in Christ do we become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God's holiness is what distinguishes him from all other beings, what separates him from everything else. God's holiness is more than just his perfection or sinless purity. It is the essence of his otherness, his transcendence. God's holiness represents the mystery of his awesomeness and causes us to gaze in wonder at him as we begin to comprehend just a little of his majesty. In his vision depicted in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah witnessed personally God's holiness. Isaiah, while being a prophet of God and a blameless man, was aware of his own sinfulness. Even the seraphim in God's presence, those who were crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, covered their faces and feet with four of their six wings. Covering the face and feet no doubt expresses the reverence and awe caused by the direct presence of God. Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. In Revelation 4, John had a vision of God's throne that was identical to Isaiah's. In reverence and amazement of the Holy One, living things surrounded the throne, crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. The creatures around God's throne, according to John, are constantly paying praise, honor, and reverence to him. Interestingly, John's reaction to God's throne vision differs from that of Isaiah. Perhaps because John had previously experienced the risen Christ at the start of his vision, there is no mention of him collapsing in terror and knowledge of his own sinful state. Revelations chapter 1, verse 17. Christ had placed his hand on John's shoulder and informed him that he should not be afraid. Similarly, if we have Christ's hand upon us in the form of his righteousness, which was exchanged for our sin at the cross, we can approach the throne of grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Finally, the angels around the throne in both visions scream out, Holy, 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 indicating that God is the same in both Testaments. We often think of the Old Testament God as a God of anger and the New Testament God as a God of love. Isaiah and John, on the other hand, paint a united picture of our holy, magnificent, and glorious God who does not change. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, and with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. James chapter 1, verse 17. God's holiness is eternal, just as He is eternal. Because Isaiah mentions each one and one cried unto another, we can presume there were several seraphim. The seraphim's job is to sing praises to God's name and character in heaven. Their ministry relates directly to God and His heavenly throne because they are positioned above the throne, unlike the cherubim who are beside it. They were indescribably beautiful. With two wings he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly, implying that some angelic beings fly. The Bible does not, however, support the common notion that all angels have wings. The conventional concept of angels with wings is drawn from their ability to move instantaneously and with unlimited speed from place to place, and wings were thought to permit such limitless movement. The seraphim, or burning ones, are only mentioned in this passage in Isaiah. They are linked to God's throne in some way. They don't appear as humans like other angels, rather they appear to be a higher degree of angel. They are a different order of celestial beings than the cherubim, despite the fact that they have wings. However, the kingdom of heaven fights of evil. Click here to watch the biblical story of Archangel Michael.